Welcome to APT Interviews, the show where we shine a spotlight on incredible artists from all across the entertainment world, whether it's music, acting, or beyond. I'm your host, APT Songs, and today we're talking to Chrissy T., a multi-talented vocalist, songwriter, and performer from Columbus, Ohio. Now, Chrissy T. has spent nearly two decades captivating audiences with her rich, soulful voice and versatility across genres like gospel, jazz, pop, and even classical music. She's not only graced the stage in critically acclaimed theatrical performances, but she's also worked as a vocal producer, and now she's stepping into her own lane with her debut EP. She recently released Metamorphosis, an album filled with deeply personal lyrics, smooth vibes, and a blend of sounds that's almost impossible to categorize into just one genre. Now, I had the chance to listen to it, and let me tell you, I was blown away. The tracks are heartfelt, thought-provoking, and they showcase her incredible vocal talent. After hearing the album, I just knew I had to sit down with her to learn more about the story behind her music and what led her to create Metamorphosis. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the conversation. Here is my one-on-one interview with Chrissy T. So, Chrissy T., welcome to the show. How are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful, actually. Congratulations on releasing your new album, or your first album, I guess, Metamorphosis. How has this process been for you, and what has the response been so far? The response has been amazing. It has exceeded my expectations. Um, I'm just delighted that it's finally out and people are receiving it well. I saw on Facebook that you had put out the album. I decided to give it a listen and I was just completely blown away because I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know how you sounded. I never heard you talk before, let alone sing. And <laughs> to go through the six tracks of this EP and just like song after song, I, I felt I connected with on a really strong level. And just props to you because you, you did a really good job on that. Thank you. I appreciate it. I always start off by asking my guests, what was your journey in terms of your early days of singing, recording, and then when did you first realize that you had a passion for music? My early days of music, um, I grew up in a very musical home. Um, Both of my parents were musically inclined. My mom was a singer. She sang in a lot of gospel choirs and things of that nature. And my father, he played the trumpet and just played all kinds of eclectic, different types of music, everything from you name it, funk, soul music, to rock and roll, to bluegrass. So I grew up in a, yeah, I grew up in a very, very musical household. And I got my first solo when I was six years old in kindergarten. And um, I just remember that feeling of how people received me after I sang the song, even though I was a nervous wreck. singing, (laughs) singing my first solo, but how people received it, that it just was such a warm feeling that I was like, I want to experience that again and again. And so, um, yeah, so I, that was when I was first bit by the love of music. Going from there, obviously you came from a musical family. What, in what ways did your mom and dad like inspire you or influence you? Oh my God. Um, In so many ways. I always say my mom was my first like music teacher. Honestly, both of my parents were my first music teacher. Um, I remember as young as my mom would, um, she, she, I didn't know at the time she was teaching me how to sing with, um, sing with um, full, full, fullness or full sound, but she would push in my stomach and she would make me do little vocal um, exercises with her. And that was how I started building my chops. And my dad, he would sit me down on, it would be like Saturday afternoons and he would go through like all of his cassettes and he would take a a weekend and would just say, let's listen to some rock from the seventies and introduce me to Pink Floyd. And then one day would sit me down and say, all right, let's listen to, um, you know, some jazz funk and, you know, would totally turn me on to George Duke. So it was just all these different types of musical influences that I grew up with. 
on top of discovering music myself as well. So. Well, of course, yeah, yeah. But I mean, even then, <laughs> then, like your parents introducing you to some of those like older bands that really had like quite the eclectic range of sounds. I can see how that would be influencing to you over time, and especially when it comes to recording your own stuff. So you went from so you went, obviously you had that early influence, but what point did you decide in your journey that you wanted to? do music professionally, whether it was through recording stuff, whether it was through like, you know, other avenues, there's obviously theater, there's other ways of doing that. Like, like what made you decide, you know what, like, I want to do this as an actual profession. Once I got to high school, um, I had a very pivotal moment when I turned about 15 years old, um, where I knew that I was put on earth to, to do music or to perform. And um, it was around the time where I first got over stage fright. Up until that point, I had stage fright for many, many years and I oh, was able man. to like push through it. But I just had this really, really pivotal moment that um, I asked God if you could you know, take away this fear that I will like use it to your glory. From that day on, I have not experienced stage fright. And so I took that as a big clue um, that this is something that I need to continue on. And so when I went to college, I went to college for music. I wouldn't go for anything else. Nice. Um, <laughs> got my I, went, I, went, I went for theater, so I get that. that. It's like, you got that feel, it's like, you're going to go chase it. So yeah. Yeah. So I, I went to school for music. I studied opera and, um, and that was something within itself, um, that taught me a, like how to use my instrument in a different way. And so once I graduated from college, I decided to, you know, figure it out of what this career would be like as an artist and how would I work it to it for it to be in my favor and make me feel, you know, complete. And then so once you got out of college, how were you using your musical gift? Because I said up to this point, there's there's been no album that I know of. So so what were you doing with music stuff? Pretty much right after college, I started working with, um, you know, a really known artist and a producer in my city. Um, but it just was something about it that just didn't feel right to me. Um, and so I went on that journey a lot. And um, I also started in high school musical theater. So I wanted to go back to that. And I started looking for auditions. So I did, I did what I knew I could do best is go on auditions and just try out for different things. And so for several years, I decided to to do theater and really excelled at it. I went to your website and it said that you've, you've had quite a few accolades for doing theater stuff. So like, like, what was that like for you when you were getting all these accolades for not only just theater, but like any musical theater that you were doing? Oh my God, it was amazing to, you know, to be recognized um, on a certain platform um, or just even to be thought of in those types of rooms, just really made me feel recognized and just blessed. And the fact that I've been putting in hard work, I've been putting in work for quite some years. Um, I also did other things outside of that. I would work with projects with other musicians. Um, I've done some, you know, featured work on different albums, things of that nature. Really? But, well, any in particular yeah. albums that you worked on? Um, yes, I worked on um, a song with an artist named Seldom Seen. Um, he is uh, a Grammy uh, nominated artist. He's done work um, overseas, things like that. Um, I've also worked with a couple of different um, producers in Columbus who have also put out things. So yeah, I've I've definitely done some featured work. My latest feature was with um, my producer for this album, Greg Owens. Um, he came out with a song called True Ohio Player that uh, came out in June back this summer and it's been doing really, really well. So I'm a featured artist on that. So I've been in the studio. It's just, I wasn't really working on my stuff. <laughs> well, cause I was gonna ask like, okay, so you've, you've been doing the, the theater stuff, musical stuff there, you've helped other people. During this time, was that helping you start to build confidence putting out your own music? Were you writing anything at this time? Like what were you doing in terms of your own stuff in the midst of working on these other things? Well, I would say for me, what I was doing was discovering my own sound. Um, like I said, I grew up with all these different types of musical influences, um, you know, gospel and soul and musical theater and opera. And for a singer who is that eclectic, it can sometimes be hard to boggle down, like, what is my sound? Because I know I can do all these things. I can go into all these different avenues. I've even done, uh, worked with a jazz band before, but it's, 
what is my sound? What is Chrissy T's sound is what I was on the path of when I would work with these different artists. And it was slowly, slowly after a while, me starting to discover, okay, this is how I can pull from this type of music or I can pull from this type of music and create my own sound. And what was that moment when you discovered like, okay, I think I have a sound that's good enough to like put together an album or, or form some kind of project of my own? I would really say it wasn't a certain project that I was working on. Um, it was a certain life uh, situation that happened is what really pushed me to say, you know what, I need to go harder with what it is that I'm truly passionate about. As much as I love musical theater and I had been doing it for a while, um, my first, first love was m simply music. And so I always wanted to put out music, but I wanted to make sure that I had something to say. And I felt like up until that point, I was like, I don't know if I have much to say, but boy, oh boy, in the last several years, I've went through a lot of things. And I'm like, I have a lot to talk about. And I think this is going to, I think this is going to resonate with some people. Yeah, it's like the, I find the journey of just life experiences as you go through more stuff. It's like by default, especially if you're a person that is a creative, you just end up having more stuff to say. Like I know in my musical yeah. journey, as I was going through moves and relationships and various things and hardships, it just, it just gets easier to write, which is, I guess, a blessing in disguise. But so I yeah, imagine it's probably the same for you. Yeah. Absolutely. So let us get into some things about the album. Like you mentioned earlier, you worked with Greg Owens on this project. How did you, how did you and him meet and how did he end up becoming your producer? We met several years ago, um, maybe around 2019 or 2020, I believe, where we were both working with a young artist. I was vocal coaching the artist and he was producing the young artist. And that's where we first met um, in a studio session. And I just like how easygoing he was, um, even working with this other um, person. I just liked how easygoing he was and how he mentored from not this like demanding place, but just almost like he knew how to pull things out of you um, that maybe you didn't know how to pull out yourself. And also at the same time, we kept running into each other the last couple of years. Like I would see him at different gigs or different, um, you know, events. And we will always say, we need to work together. We need to work together. And, you know, you know how artists do that. Kind yes. Of thing. Yes. <laughs> And I'm always surprised when it's like, wait, we're actually going to work together. Like you actually, this oh, is actually, actually going to happen. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So it was one of those things. And I think we both had um, a moment in our lives where it everything just aligned. Everything just aligned. And we both had the time and the, the dedication to actually see it through. Okay. Now, had you had you tried working with other producers prior to him and just was kind of like, maybe it wasn't the right feel or like, like what was the journey leading up to finding him? Yes. Um, up until I met him, I worked with several different producers. Like I said, I had even worked on some of their albums and have wrote and, um, you know, vocally produced and sung on their albums. And it was a matter of these particular people either ha weren't as diverse in their soundscape as much as I like, or it was a certain level of professionalism that I just, it wasn't on up to par or even just a safety, uh, a safety situation of me feeling safe, which is very important to me as a female artist. So I wanted to make sure that I was with someone who has an eclectic taste of music, could do any kind of sound, um, and who also I just felt safe around. Now, some people hear producer and they they don't really get an idea of like, what does a producer actually do? So in terms of helping you shape Metamorphosis, what parts did he play in in making that album come to life? Oh, my God. He did so much. He he probably exceeded the <laughs> the expectations of what a producer does. He did everything from um, create like composing the music, uh, beat making to um, even just coaching me, directing me through different, um, you know, how to approach a certain verse or even how to, okay, maybe let's add another stack right there. Let's maybe try to add a different harmony here. Um, he just, he just was a very hands-on producer. He even mixed, mastered and engineered the product project as well. Wow. And that, um, that's, that's a lot of work in and of itself. Just that part. Yeah. <laughs> that's a lot of work. So kudos to him for taking on all of that. I would say we both in that sense, um, 
we both had that same mindset in the sense of we like to be very hands on with everything that we do. Um, I think that makes the ending product be even more sweeter when someone knows that it was it was it was made with love. Yeah, it was very yeah. intentional. Like every part of the process was very intentional. Um, so, yeah, he did a lot. Now, the album itself, so it's it's six songs. Uh, it took two years to complete. Were there any challenges or breakthroughs during the process that stand out to you, uh, whether it was like the the reason it took maybe a little bit longer or what things that had to happen to make you more motivated to finish the project? I had some, um, some really tragic life situations happen that really pushed me to wanting to make this um, this project happened. My father passed away in 2021. And right after he passed away, I made a promise to myself that I would push myself even harder in my music career. Um, just because I knew that he was one of my first influences to why I love this, this thing so much. And so that was kind of like my promise to him. Um, I'm really big on honoring my parents. So I started in the fall of 2021 making this album um, with a, I have a track on the album called Shadows. That was the first song that I um, recorded and wrote for the project. Okay. Um, okay. And, then on, and then through there, I just kept having life situations happen. I had every intention on this album being put out last year, but right before I was considering that my mom passed away. And so it was just these really, really big big situations in my life that were happening that made me have to pause and reflect on just how I want to continue to honor them and also put this album out at a time where I feel would make the most sense for me, especially being on a grief journey. So. Oh yeah. Nay. My dad died when I was nine. So I, I totally get that. Like having to go yeah. through, like people don't understand that, like, even though, you know, life goes on, but it's like, you just, that motivation, you're just going through your grief and it's like, you got to get to that point where it's like, okay, I can finally go outside again. You know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So let's get into some of the songs that are on this album. So first off, like I said, when I pressed play, I did not know what to expect. I didn't know if this was going to be like jazzy R and B, or this is going to be like, I don't know, some, some other type of genre. So I was really, really amazed at the uh, eclectic soundscape that was created for this album. Because like from the first beat to the last one, there's like, there's, you know, there's uh, upbeat tunes, there's jazzier tunes. Like there's just, it just goes throughout the entire album. And so starting off with Stuck in Limbo, this song has, it, it's very deeply personal lyrics about struggling with everyday life and trying to figure out like, where to go, because you've been here, you're trying to get here, but you don't know what the next move is. Don't want to be stuck in limbo Clinging to my past, but I need to move on What inspired you to write that song, and what message are you hoping that it conveys to the listener? Um, yes, with that particular song, Stuck in Limbo, I wanted to just write from the perspective of somebody who has been in that place where they don't know how to make the next step in their life, but they know that they're just tired of being in the same, in the same boat, the same situation. And I just know that many people can relate to that. And I was in that, that season at that particular time. And I was, I kept journaling about it. I wanted to always draw my music from, you know, experiences that I've been through. So I was just going through my journal and searching that a lot of my entries kept talking about that. It was a little bit more of the same. And I'm like, okay, I need to write to this and maybe this will get me out of my stuck period. And it kind of did. It was very cathartic in that way. Well, yeah, because you talk about like you're stuck in limbo and you're you're trying to move on, but you it's hard to let go. So it's that thing of like, you know, you kind of got to move, but there's still a part of your past. is just like, I can't. And I'm sure a lot of people also go through that. Absolutely. Absolutely. I I will say so far the the reception on that from people has just, been such a blessing. I, I woke up to a message this morning where someone was saying, I've been playing that every day to help me get out of this, you know, situation that I'm in um, where, you know, they're having, they're kind of down on the, their luck right now, but 
they're just they're finding inspiration in that song. And that just that means the world to me. But I also find it interesting because as as a theater person myself, I, I'm very I'm very much a fan of narrative. And so, you know, you calling your your EP Metamorphosis, if I'm looking at the structures of the songs, the, the album starts out with, I'm in this transitional period, but I don't know where to go. And then, spoiler, by the end of the album, it's like you've come to that place where you feel like you've kind of got stuff more together. So, and, and, and listening back, it's like, oh, this is like, you're, you're starting at the midpoint. Like, that's awesome. And then the songs, each one of those kind of dives into deeper things. And then you kind of see throughout the course of the album how you get from like being in like the limbo place to the dark place to like, now you're kind of coming out of it to where like you finally feel free. Like, so that makes mm -hmm. this first track like a really stellar way to start the album. Yeah, absolutely. I'm all about narrative as well. I love storytelling. I think that's one reason why I was, you know, drawn to theater as well as just being passionate about music. It's all, all stories. Um, and what more than, you know, telling a story can people relate to um, especially when it's in music form. So I, I want to get in the shadows because we just talked about it. I, I didn't know that that was the, I didn't know that was the first track you wrote and that that was based off of like after your dad dying and you wrote that. Because when, when I was listening to it, you know, I listened to it repeatedly and looked at the words and I noticed that, so it, it very much starts off like, it's a very groovy track. Like it's a very dance floor, mm -hmm. get on your yeah. season dance track. And I'm listening to it and it's giving me the same vibes as Janet Jackson's Together Again. Because that song, she was grieving the loss of somebody. But if you don't pay attention to the club, you're just like, this is a this is amazing. And so when I'm listening back, yeah. it's like, wait a minute, like the whole song, like it's got these introspective lyrics talking about like struggling and being in the darkness and trying to find the light. Felt like a fool. For that type of song, how did you decide I had this like dark subject matter and I'm going to put it to like a really danceable track? You know what? I don't think I was thinking so deeply into it. I think that there was a certain melody that was stuck in my head. And sometimes um, what will happen is uh, I will listen to a song and I'll hear the melody first and I'll try to search for a word that comes to mind that is, I don't know, sticking out to me. And so shadows just kept sticking out to me. And I'm just like, well, what is reflective of, of shadow? And at the time I was getting deep into learning what, what shadow work is mm, yeah. and how you have to, you know, work through that in order for you to, you know, find your breakthrough, find your healing. And so I thought, I was like, hmm, that would be really interesting to talk about on this record that makes you want to move your behind. Like, <laughs> so it's funny that you brought up Janet Jackson because that's literally one of my favorite artists of all time and how oh. she's had that ability. She's been having that ability since the beginning of her career to write these really introspective, you know, profound lyrics in this music that makes you want to dance. And so yeah. I, I love that. I, I'm glad that I was able to, you know, dig a little deeper on such a, a fun sounding track. Your harmonies on the song, when you're especially when you're singing the chorus, because I cannot get the the refrain of deep into the shadows of my mind. But it sounds almost like it's like if it's you know you're deep in the shadows, like you're like a dark cave, but you're like yelling out like, "Hey, I'm down here!" I like that's the vibe I get from the way you're singing those harmonies on the chorus, which I absolutely love. Thank you, I appreciate that. Um, I'm very very big. Um, into just vocal layering and harmonies. And, and I grew up on, I grew up on that kind of music. So I wanted to definitely make sure that that was reflected throughout that song. And, and speaking of that, because like I said, you have a, quite the wide vocal range. And so from song to song, it's like it all cohesively sounds like you, but like for your upbringing, you, it's like a lot of different ways that you deliver your song. So like in the song speech, when I was hearing it, it sonically gave me like a throwback to like the early 90s in Vogue days, because it's like, you're the only one on the track, but you have your, you're singing the lead vocals and then you have, you in the background like, da, 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 da. and I was like, oh my God, like it just, it just gives such a great feel to that, you know? What I know and what I feel feels familiar. How did you decide from song to song what kind of harmonies you were going to, to use? I think it's all about what I'm hearing in the soundscape. Like I will um, listen to a track 
like speech and it has all these really light, airy kind of um, string chords, different kinds of violins and and I'm very influenced by all of that background. And so I just wanted the harmonies to be reflective of that. And I also did on that particular song on speech, I did these little really operatic um, high harmonies in the background because I felt like it had this haunting kind of feel to it when you listen to it. Yeah, um, yeah. And so I was like, let me, let me build on that. Let me see how high I can go. <laughs> and it's interesting too, because like the song itself is it's song. It's sung in a very kind of like soft type of way, but like the subject matter of, it sounds almost like there's like mixed signals happening within a relationship. Does he like me? Does he not? What's going on? So again, it's one of those things where it's like the subject matter itself, it, it leads to like, this is really like, something that's like hurting me. I can't tell what's going on, but like it just sung so sweetly, you know? So I really appreciated the the delivery of that on that as well. Thank you. I appreciate that. So now we get to 85 to infinity. So um, in the press release, I think it said that this one features Poji from your, your, your late father. What lines in that song were inspired by or specifically from him in that song? Well, much of the first verse is the actual poetry just sung to to the music. Um, when I first heard that track, um, I instantly started crying <laughs> and I just thought it was beautiful. I was, I was like, well, this is gonna be a love song, obviously. I don't know what I'm gonna write about. And so when I did sit down to actually write to, um, to the song, I looked over on my coffee table and there is a love note that my father wrote my mom. Um, on her 55th birthday. And so I just keep it there. And I looked over at it and I said, wait a minute, I think these will go great with the song. And I don't know if that's lazy or not, but I hey, thought that- take it where you can. Take it where you can. If you it know? works, it works. But I just started singing it to the melody that was in my head and it just fit. It was, it was kismet. And so I'm just super grateful that- um, I was able to, you know, include that into the music. And I just know my dad would be super proud to know that he has some kind of hand in that. Now, listening to the song, because again, I'm, I'm a theater person. I'm listening for words. And so I, I, when I listened back to it, I realized, wait a minute. Okay, so in the first verse, it definitely sounds like words being used indicate this is a guy singing to his woman. And then in the second verse, like, because in the first verse, he's like saying, you know, oh, I love you with each passing day and you're so beautiful to me. And realizing the truth And then in the second verse, we're hearing like, oh, you've been so protective. You make me feel safe. I'm like, that's got to be a woman. You show me the, through all your efforts, you've been so protective and make me feel safe. So this was like, she's singing both parts, the, the guy and the, and the girl's part. So th it sounds like this was like a way for you to honor your parents. In, in what way were you able to do that on this track? Oh my God, in every every kind of way. Um, and that's exactly how I wanted to approach it because the first verse did seem so fitting from a man's perspective. I said, well, the second verse has to be from a female's perspective. And what would a woman who's been in a long term you know, relationship with someone, what would they say to honor their spouse or their partner? I think they would wanna talk about safety. I think they would wanna talk about feeling protected. I feel like they would wanna talk about the ways of how a man could show show them love in the way that they want to be loved. And so I thought it was very important for that to be, that that dynamic to be included in the song. Because say for instance, which, you know, knock on wood, you know, this is a wedding song for someone. Um, it can It can be reflective of two different vantage points. And so I really, really wanted that reflected in the music. And I just think it, it was, it's dope because you don't really hear that in a lot of love songs. That's so true. It's, you really either hear from one perspective or the other perspective, which is which is fine. But it's like again, which the person, I, I I respect the storytelling dynamic of that and being able to take on two different characters, and then the song still comes across very very poignant. I could definitely see this being used as a wedding song for sure. Absolutely, I've already been getting people to say mark your calendar. You want to sing it? You want to sing it? Save the date. <laughs> okay, so then we get to the next track. So uh, the next track is Shine. As a young man growing up, uh, I got into music by way of my dad. He was big into Kumo D, Big Daddy Kane, uh, all those guys and whatnot. Yeah. Um, but I didn't start buying music until I was like 11 or, or 10 or 11 years old. And the first album that I ever bought with my own money 
was Arrested Development. And wow. so, and so when I heard the opening of Shine, I was like, oh snap, she's doing everyday people. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> Was it your decision or was it uh, Greg's decision to try to use that track for one of the songs in your album? That was totally my decision. Okay. Um, he sent me, he, around that particular time, um, I had just came back. I was living in Michigan for a short amount of time. And I just came back and I was just like, I need something fun to write to. And um, that particular song came on out of all the different samples and soundscapes he sent me. And I said, oh, I'm right into this one. I mean, that <laughs> that song is iconic to the 90s, yes. okay? <laughs> and it's just a feel-good record. I mean, whether it's the original, which is Sly and the Family Stone, that is a feel-good record, all the way to how, you know, Speech did it with Arrested Development. I think it's just one of those timeless kind of, you know, songs that it's going to always make you feel good about yourself when you hear it. So It really does. It really is. So then how'd you go about incorporating your own style into that particular uh, beat? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to do something different. Um, you know, I had a very, very long lost dream for maybe two seconds of wanting to be a rapper in my high school years. Don't know why. So glad I didn't explore that. But <laughs> oh don't don't kid yourself because the, the flow that you had on that song, I was like, if, if this wasn't a like a sing song, this is almost like sweetie or somebody like talk like talking their crap on the record, like, oh snap, okay. I'm chasing dreams and they stay chasing clouds. Uh -huh. Big fun it illuminates like a star. Cause the way I are this novel will go far. That was me in my Missy Elliott bag, for sure. You know, I wanted to, I was like, I'm gonna pay a little homage to young Christina right now. So Okay, okay. I, I definitely put got my little rap singing on off on that song. Yeah, no, I definitely felt that. And also, again, it, it comes at an interesting point in the record because, you know, like the first song, you're stuck in limbo, you're trying to figure it out. Then you're doing shadow work. Then you're having like issues with the love where it's like, you don't know what's going on. He's potentially breaking your heart. And so to go from that to this song where it's like, well, I thought that you broke my heart, but actually I'm the one that did it because I was accepting these things and I wasn't confident. But now on this record, I'm showing that I actually am a more confident person now and I'm going to shine through and celebrate that. So like, it really does add to like the metamorphosis of starting to come into like, I'm more confident, I believe in myself, I can do things, I'm taking responsibility. And so, yeah, it was really, really good. But but how was it important was it for you to relay that message to people about being able to shine, to be able to be yourself, et cetera? Oh, it's so important because my mantra is, uh, you know, be who you are. You are enough just as you are. You don't have to be someone else to be loved or to be, um, supported or whatever it is that you need in life, you can provide that for yourself and you don't have to go looking outside of yourself to receive those things. And so I think you don't hear that enough in music anymore. It's talking about self-love and talking about self-acceptance. I think a lot of times it's always from a, a, a point of view of what this person did to you or what this person is doing for you versus what am I doing for myself? how can I pour into myself or love myself? And so that, you know, I would really want to make a song that celebrated, you know, a person for who they are. And then you had Greg Owens on the track. So what made you decide to include him on that track? As soon as he heard the way I was flowing on the song, he was like, oh, I, I got to jump on this song. <laughs> I got to jump on this track. I can't just, you know, let you be the one. On it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so I, I welcomed it. I, I was like, I think that this song needs a breath of fresh air at the, you know, as soon as the song opens, you know, you just hear this, this just fun loving verse that he spits and um, yeah, it just fit. It just, it just fit really well, especially coming after 85 to infinity, which, you know, if you hear that song, that song makes you want to cry or you might be crying or you just might feel just all these emotions that come up when you listen to it. And then afterwards it just, it's like, Whoa, okay, this is refreshing to hear after something like that. And then lastly, we have on the uh, album Home. Now, um, in, in the press release, you mentioned that both Shadow and Home were like some of people's favorite songs. What makes you feel as though people gravitated to those songs in particular? I think that those two in particular, one, you can groove to them. Two, they have these really profound, meaningful lyrics that people can relate to. People have been who who have experienced that. I think everyone at some point has experienced grief. 
And sometimes we lose our own way in the process of that. And we oftentimes, especially when it's a loved one that is close to us, we have that hard time of feeling like, you know, what does home represent now, now that this person is out of my life? And also with shadows, the same thing. Um, how can I get from out of a dark place and get back to the light that I want to experience? It's all about a journey. And I think sometimes we don't really hear that in music where a song is literally taking you on a journey. Um, and I just think that people, and they love to groove to it as well. It's really catchy. The soundscape on this album, like the different feelings you have, the different almost genres at times, the different beats, but again, it still feels like a cohesive piece. Now, when you were putting this album together, for one, like how many like instrumentals and beats did you have to listen through? And then also, were there any extra songs that you recorded that maybe didn't hit this album? Yeah. Oh my God. We've searched through so many. Um, Greg is a, he's a percussionist. He's a, a drummer. So that is his main um, instrument as musician. And so I like working with drummers a lot, specifically as producers, because I feel like they have a very, um, very interesting ear when it comes to how they approach music. He does sample a lot of music, even though he does compose original, but he does use samples, um, you know, if something catches his ear. And so we went through a lot. <laughs> we went through a lot of different sounds. And I think what stuck out to me the most was I wanted to make music. I felt like if this is an EP, I want people to get a very great introduction to who I am as an artist. You can hear the influences. You can hear um, just vocally and musically what I'm interested in and what I have to talk about. To answer your other question, I did uh, record some other songs as well Okay. Um, that did not make the cut. Those songs, I'm considering to make them singles later, um, but I felt like they didn't fit within this particular project because once I started to um, record all the songs for this, once I listened to those other songs, they just did not, they didn't tell the story. Yeah. And 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 that's exactly what I was trying to get at when I was putting this project together. I'm like, what is it that I have to say? Because I'm not a person who just is going to put out music just to put out music. I feel like that's so many artists nowadays who do that and let them have it. But someone who has been around in the business as long as I have and who has, you know, um, the experience that I have, I feel like I want to be very... Um, intentional and just purposeful with how I approach making this this album. So you you put the the album came out on Friday with the twentieth, right? And mm -hmm. I believe you, in your press release it said that that was the the day of your mom's heavenly birthday. So was it intentional to put it out on that day? It was. It was very intentional. Yeah. The last song that I recorded was my single. Um, stuck in limbo. That was the last song I recorded before my mom passed away. Literally that same weekend, like that Friday before she passed, I recorded that song. And um, I wanted I wanted the whole album to be a surprise to her. So the songs that I had recorded up until then, I was just was like, you'll just have to wait till it comes out. Oh. Um, and so I know. So oh. it, I sometimes have those bits of regrets, but I know ultimately it's okay because I know she is super proud of me. And one way I could honor her is I wanted to put it out on a, on a day that means, you know, the world to me. So yeah, that was my way of honoring her. I feel that I, when I was back, back in the 2008 year, when I was putting out videos every single week, the, the song I put out before the Obama song was, a uh, uh, it was father's day. And I made a song dedicated to my dad. Cause I was like, if nothing else, he's not here. I can still like honor his memory yeah. on that day. So I understand the importance of that. Cause you still want to feel like there's like that connection and vibe of like, they're going to still appreciate this thing that I'm putting out for them. So now that the album's out, what's next in terms of like what's going to be happening with the album? Are you going to be performing at places? Like what's the journey of this album look like now that it's out? Now that it's out, I want it to take me as far as I possibly can go. I have some dates lined up for it to be performed live. I am trying to get certain tracks overseas and more ears and eyes on the music and just wanting to see where it could take me. And then lastly, now that it's out, what do you hope that listeners ultimately take away from this album and the, the experience that they have with it? 
What I want them to take away from it is for them to know that they are not alone in what they are going through, um, that you have a story and your story is meant to be told. Don't be afraid to share your story with others because that brings more healing to the world. And I hope that by them receiving this album that it can heal them in some kind of way. Awesome. Well, yeah, I said I, I had a fantastic time listening to it and then listening to it and then listening to it. I think it's it's uh, definitely one of the highlights of this year so far for me in terms of music wow. that I've listened to. And I hope that you guys that are watching this go check out the album. Where can they find the album? Metamorphosis. They will be able to find Metamorphosis on all music platforms. Um, my name is Chrissy T. And uh, so if you go to Apple Music, Spotify, um, Amazon Music, YouTube, www.chrissytcreates.com. That is my website. And you can also follow me on socials at Chrissy T Creates as well. I want to give a huge thank you to Chrissy T for taking the time to sit down and share her journey and insights behind Metamorphosis. And hey, if you haven't checked it out already, make sure to listen to her debut EP, Metamorphosis, which you can find right now on all streaming platforms. Trust me, you do not want to miss it. Also, I'm always on the lookout for other talented artists to feature on the show. So if you're a musician, actor, or a creative in general, and you think that I'd like your work, feel free to send it my way. You can hit me up at aptsongs at hotmail.com. I'm always excited to discover new talent. Anyway, that's all I got for today. I'm APT Songs, and I'll catch you guys next time. I'm out. Peace. Ooh.